good day everyone god bless you in the name of jesus our god is good and his mercies endure it forever to god be all the glory for great things he has done it's the ninth month of the year 2024 to god be the glory he has been so faithful he has brought us this far and is able to take us along to the end of the year and many years to come in the name of the Lord Jesus. You've been faithful, Lord, in the ages past. That is why your name, O Lord, is forevermore. Our precious Father, we thank you. We bless your name for the month of September 2024. On behalf of all my viewers and my fans, followers of this page all over the world, I return all the glory to you, my Lord. The God who lives in heaven and made the earth is full too. God that is bigger than the biggest and stronger than the strongest. The God who remained faithful forever, we worship you. Thank you for your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We have come again, Lord, to hear from you. May you speak your word unto us. That this words we are going to hear today will help us to live according to your will. So that we will not break the edge and the serpent will come and bite us. He, speak to us, Lord. Give us the ear to hear and the ability to understand. Holy Spirit, take over. In Jesus' name, we hear from you. Amen. Congratulations, everyone. Hope you are doing great because the Lord is on your side. Your victory is sure. Say amen over there. Amen. Praise God. We are talking about something very serious today. And uh, I know that God Almighty will use this message to bless somebody. If you are the one, say amen. Thank you for all your responses. Thank you for the comments. I know that this page has been a blessing to you. Please don't forget to like, to share, and comment at the end of this message today. Remain blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning we are talking about a topic that says, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to anybody. Proverbs 14 verse 34 Righteousness exalts a man, a family, a nation, and a people. But sin is a reproach. We all know that God remained the same forever and ever. Whatever he says is true. It cannot be changed by man. It cannot be changed by government. It cannot be changed by situations. Proverbs 14.34 Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. We are going to be looking at some persons in the Bible who on their own accord decide to do a sinful act that brought calamity upon them. They are going to say, Oh Lord, may I not use my hand to bring calamity upon myself and my generation yet unborn. Somebody say that prayer, Oh Lord, may I not use my hand to bring calamity upon myself and upon my generation yet unborn. In Jesus' name, amen. A lot of people today are very good at looking for Satan. But today we are going to look at something. Maybe some of us have heard it before. And maybe some of us have also not heard it. In Genesis 31, verse 34 and 35, in Genesis 31, when you read from verse 1, Jacob has been with his father-in-law, Laban, for so long, about 21 years, 20 years. And he married Leah and Rachel. And he had so many children in his father-in-law's house. Because of time, I not be able to read all through. And at a time, Jacob decided to leave his father-in-law. He ran away from his father-in-law. And what happened? As they were going away, his daughter Rachel, who was supposed to be the first wife of Jacob, maybe she felt that what the father did to her was not good. 
and she decided to punish the father. She went to the father's room, carried this idol. I don't know what that idol meant, meant there. It could mean his precious property that the father loved so much. Rachel decided to steal it while they were running away with their family. And when they left, when Laban discovered that that particular item must be removed from his house, he decided to pursue after Jacob and caught up with them. He would have destroyed them, but the God of his father came in the night and warned Laban, don't touch this man. It's my son. And at the end of the day, he caught up with them, went into the camp, I told Jacob, why did you steal my, 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 my item? It was referred to here as a god. Something you preciously admire. Could be a god to you. And Jacob said, I don't know anything about what you are saying. And he said, you can search. The man began to search. And in verse 34 of Genesis 31, let's read together. Now Rachel had taken the images, put them in a camel's furniture, and sat upon them. And Laban searched all the ten, but found them not. In verse 35, she said to her father, Let it not displease my father, that I cannot rise up before thee, for the custom of women is upon me. And he searched, but found the images not. This woman stole the image. He stole something precious from his father. She hid it. And when she heard that the father was coming to search for it, she put it on the chair and sat upon it. And for, for the father not to ask her to get up, he told the father, the, I'm, I'm in my monthly condition. So in Israel, you're not supposed to touch that woman. She was hiding something. And that was an error. What happened to Rachel? Like I said in the beginning, I told her that we should pray that we will not use our hand to bring calamity upon our lives. Let's go to the book of Genesis 35, verse 16. Genesis 35, verse 16. And they journeyed from Bethel, and, but there was a little way to come to Ephrath. And Rachel traveled, and she had hard labor. At that time, Rachel was already pregnant when she stole that material and sat upon it. And when they got to the way, she fell into labor. In verse 17 of Genesis 35, and it came to pass, she was in hard labor. And the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. And it came to pass as her soul was departing, for she died. And she called his name Benoni. But his father called him Benjamin. And Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath, which is in Bethlehem. Praise the name of the Lord. And Jacob set a pillar upon her grave. That pillar is that pillar of Rachel grave is there unto this day. Amen. Rachel died. She stole the father's idol and sat on it. Anything you are sitting on, anything in your house, anything in your family, anything in your destiny that would have sent you to an early grave, receive grace to remove it in Jesus' name. Amen. It was not God's intention for Rachel to die at that age, even at childbirth, because it contradicts the word of God. What of God says, she shall be, she shall be saved at her childbearing. So Rachel died because she had sin. She kept sin in her bosom. So our topic says sin is a reproach. The second person we are looking at today is a man called Gehazi. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 21 to 27. 2 Kings 5, 21 to 27. We are going to be looking at a man called Elisha. Elisha was a prophet in Israel. He succeeded Elijah. 
he got double portion of the anointing. He had a servant called Gehazi. And there was a man that came to him called Naaman. Naaman was a leprous man. He came from afar, from Syria to Israel to be cured of his leprosy by prophet Elisha. Thank God he got his miracle. And because he was an infidel, he was an unbeliever, he was not a Jew. The, the prophet knew better what to do. He didn't want to inherit the leprosy of Naaman. That's why today when God places us in a position, it's not every gift that we accept. It's not everything we clap for. It's not every present that we accept. Because some of them, God has not approved them for you. Naaman was not a Jew. He was not a believer. He was an unbeliever. He didn't believe in the God of Israel. And he didn't believe in a righteous life. Maybe that money was fraudulently gotten. Those things he brought. God told Elisha, don't take it. He went away with the bags of money. Dollars, maybe pounds or whatever. Precious stones. And immediately he left. His servant's eye was on it. In, in the book of 2 Kings chapter 5, open your Bible. Let's read together. We are reading from verse 21. Remember, Elisha has rejected the offerings from Naaman. For reasons best known to him, because he's a servant of God. God has told him, don't take. And he didn't take. But his servants opened eye. His eyes were on the precious stones and the bags of money. Say, eh? So this man should just go with this thing. He ran after Naaman. And collected those things. In verse 21 of 2 Kings, let's read. So Gehazi followed after Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after him, he alighted from his chariot to meet him. And said, is he well? And he said, all is well. My master has sent me, saying, Behold, even now, there, there be come to me from Mount Ephraim, two young men of the sons of prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garments. And Naaman said, Be content, take two talents. And he urged him and bound him two talents of silver and two bags with two charges of garments and laid them upon two of his servants and they bear them before him. <clears throat> and when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house and let them go and they departed. But when Tin has stood before his master and Elisha sent unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went no eater. May you not use light to destroy yourself. And he said unto him, Went not my heart with thee, when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee? Is it time to receive money? Is it time to receive sheep and oxen, and men servants and maid servants? The leprosy therefore of Nehemiah cleave unto thee, <coughs> and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence, a leper as white as snow. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, this topic, <laughs> when God gave it to me, I, I looked at it. In short, this part of the Bible has been a, a part I cherish so much. May I not receive a gift that will bring calamity upon me and my family forever in Jesus' name. You are a child of God. You are so interested in collecting gifts from people. Whether approved or not approved. We don't even have time to listen to the Holy Spirit. I want to let you know that if you go against the will of God, you can inherit leprosy. What you mean by leprosy is that it might, you might not be, you might be leprous physically. There might be a disease and infirmity that comes of that, upon that family forever. Gehazi lied. He lied to Neman and he lied to Elisha. My God said, I should come and bring these things. Did the God ask him to go and bring the things? No. And when he came, he didn't even know that the God that he was following is a spiritual man. The man said, my spirit went with you. I saw you. Even when we were hiding the things, is it time to receive money? He 
Is it every money you eat? Some people are in a position to, 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 to spend government money or to spend church money or to spend their company's money. They use it for themselves. The people that are supposed to get that thing, you deprive them of it. You are inviting leprosy. I'm sorry. These things are biblical. Money that is meant to be used for an assignment in the house of God. Money that is meant to be used for the betterment of your society or your village or your clan. You eat it. That's what happened to, Lep to, to uh, the man who just talked about. Gehazi. He ate it. And he became leprous. There was a curse upon him. He became leprous. And what pained me so much is that that leprosy was not only for him. It was for his generation yet unborn. May that leprosy rest upon you and your generation forever. Somebody say, God forbid. God forbid, but you don't do it. If others are doing it, you don't do it. Praise the name of the Lord. We are going to look at the third man. The third man we are looking at is a man called David. David and Bathsheba. David was a king in Israel. And he lustfully took Uriah's wife. Hmm? That was not the novel. David went ahead, gave Uriah a letter of death by his hand to, 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 to take to Joab in the war front. He used the sound to carry his, his bomb of suicide. Because he was a loyal man to the king, he did not open the letter. He took it because it's the king that gave him the letter. May your good not kill you. Even if you read that, cha that chapter, I, I read it from chapter verse 1 of chapter 11. But because of time, we are going to look at verses 13 and 15. Then let's read verse 13. Even when he came, David tried to lure him to go and sleep with the wife. He said, no, my friends, my mates, my colleagues, they are in the war front. You're asking me to go and lie with my wife. He didn't go. He lay down in the chamber with the king's servants. And when the king discovered it, let's see what King David did. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, we are going to read verse 13 and 15. And when David called him, he did eat and drink before him. And he made him drunk. And at even he went to lie on his bed with the servants of his king, of the king, but went not to his house. David wanted him to be drunk so that he can go and sleep with the wife because he knew that he has already impregnated the wife. See what David did. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set Uriah in front, in forefront of the hottest battle and retire him from him that he may be smitten and die. He did that evil. And it came to pass that Uriah was smitten and he died. May you not use your hand to bring calamity upon yourself. David was a man after God's heart. Let's read verse 27. Let's read verse 27 of that same chapter we just read. And when the morning was passed, David sent and fetched her to his house. And she became his wife and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. You might be doing something today. People are clapping for you. Your position is pumping you. That you no longer see evil in whatever you are doing. Hmm? Sin is a reproach. You are, nobody can question you. May we not rise to that position that nobody can correct us. So he, after sending the man to death, he still took his wife. He had the audacity. Because nobody can quit him. But God was angry with David. God was angry with David. Let's read chapter 12. From verse 10. See what God did to David. In chapter 12. Verse 10. God sent Nehemiah to go and tell David. Come. 
Look at what happened in your kingdom. And he said, no, that person that did that, he must be killed. You read it on your own because of time. He said, that person must be punished. Go and bring the man. And Nathan said, you are the one. God said his servant, Nathan, go and tell him, you are the one. And look at the punishment. Listen to the punishment too. We are going to read chapter 12 of 2 Samuel from verse 10. He said, Now therefore, this sword shall never depart from thy house, because thou art despised me, and taking the wife of Uriah, the Hittite, to be thy wife. And said the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thy own house, and I will take thy wife before thy eyes, and give them to thy neighbors, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of the son. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before the whole Israel and before the son. Amen. And David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And the Lord said unto David, The Lord shall also put away thy sin that thou shalt not die. Amen. So, what I'm trying to say here is that Nathan was sent to rebuke David. God caused David's house. Saul shall never depart from your house. That's why you see Israel today, they are always fighting wars. So, the sword has never departed from the house of David. From one war to the other. From what, since I was born, I've always heard them fighting war. Different, different kind of wars. People are killed. People are slain. Because God had laid a curse. May you not lose your heart to do what will bring calamity upon yourself and your children yet unborn in Jesus' name. The singular act of this King David caused Wahala that Israel is still fighting till today. A lot of people have done things that make God to be angry. Are you one of them? If you are one of them, you better cry for repentance now. Because God is, is a righteous judge. Sin must be punished wherever it is found. May sin not be found in your home in the name of Jesus. May sin not be found. May sin not be the order of the day in your life. Don't say, nobody can do me anything. Hey, hey, we hear. Who talk? I do on this. Man, no wala. Who do any? I give any. We hear you. But remember, the wicked shall never go unpunished. Go on, go on, ask, go on, ask. Do, do a kind of, a, a kind of a follow up. Find out those who lived anyhow in the past. Go and look at their back. Go and see what has befallen their children. Hmm? So, from generation to the next. And the one that sang it. Oh, sin is a reproach. It's not good for you to commit sin. Especially the sin you commit willfully. That is what we are looking at. We are looking at Rachel. We have looked at Leche, we have looked at uh, um, Geazi, and we are now looking at uh, David. Willful sin. Oh my God. Don't try it all. Oh. It's not good. Don't throw people under your feet. Don't take people for granted. Sin is a reproach. Wherever God finds it, He will punish it. He will start it with the man that committed it. At all, we no, no, no tossy. Or may we say, a lot of things are happening today. We don't know the cause. You can't sit upon a bag of gunpowder. It will explode. That's what sin is. Bible calls it what? A reproach. Finally, we are looking at a man called Abraham, who was God's friend. <laughs> Genesis chapter 15. We are going to read verse 7. From verse 7, we are going to read Genesis 15. We are going to read from verse 7 to... 13. 
let's hear this. Some of us have been hearing it, but you have met some people are hearing it for the first time. One, I said not to him, God was talking to Abraham. Now, God is talking to Abraham. I am the Lord that brought you thee out of the all of Chadis and give thee this land to inherit. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take a haifa of three years old, and a she goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a pigeon, and a, a and a turtle dove, and a pigeon. And he took unto him all this and God said divide them into two <clears throat> God told Abraham all these things I've asked you to bring divide them into two cut them into two and he took all these things and divided them into two and laid each piece upon the other but the beds he divided not God said everything divide it everything plus the pigeon Plus the total dose. Cut everything to do. Abraham did not cut the pigeon. He did not cut the total dose. He just put them on the fire like that. And when the fires came upon the carcass, Abraham drove them away. Abraham now put fire on the sacrifice. He refused to burn. May your sacrifice not refuse to burn in Jesus' name. We have other sacrifices to God. Then here. And then here. Anything I see. No, no, no. You don't do it like that. God is a God of instructions. If you are a child of God, what does God, God ask you to do? Do it the way he wants you to do it. Not the way you want to do it. Abraham said, the turtle dove was too small. There's no need to cut it into two. The pigeon is too small. Why, I mean, if you, why, why must I cut pigeon into two? And he put fire. The thing refused to burn. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon him. And lo, an hour of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that's not theirs, and shall serve them, and shall afflict hundred years. One sin of Abraham brought calamity upon his family for 400 years. God even promised them that when it is time, eh, I will judge that country. In verse 14. And he said, That nation whom thou shalt serve, I will judge. And afterward shall come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But you don't suffer put. You see God. If he gives us instruction, let's obey. Trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus. But to trust and obey. Obey instruction. Today we are very good at saying, I don't know what's happening to me. I don't know. Every sin that my father has commit, committed that wanted to punish me. In Jesus' name, I separate myself. Separate yourself. And you that is looking at me now, don't use your hand to plant an evil seed. I've already been saying it on this page. I'm sorry. That's what I'm asked to do. Because there's too much calamity in the church today. There's too much calamity in the world today. There's too much problem in the world today. Because of the evil seeds that men sowed in the past. You don't continue it all. You kill it from your generation. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Israelites went to Egypt for 40 years. Because Abraham refused to cut Toto Dove into two. He refused to cut PG into two finish. That was where that cause came from. What is that thing that you have done? The ark of God was being brought from the land of the Philistines to, his, to, to, to Israel. A man called Uza saw the ark almost fall. He went to touch it and he died. May I not touch what God asked me not to touch. He, the man was going to do a good work, but in a bad way. It was only the priest that had been empowered to touch the ark. The man wanted to do a bad, a good work. He went to touch it and he died immediately. Why? Why did he die? Because he was not officially approved by God to do that thing. There are certain things that God has not approved you to do. Don't do it. Don't do it all. Don't eat what belongs to people, though. Don't stand in the gap, oh. Don't oppress the poor. Don't bring sin upon your family. Father has sin and the children are suffering. May you not suffer for the sin that you have not committed. In the mighty name of Jesus. So this month of September, we, we, we are here again to advise ourselves. This page, you know, 
It's a page where you come and collect wisdom and add to the one you already have. God has blessed you. Be thankful. Don't oppress people. What belongs to the other person, give him. You have a worker. Pay him his money. I will be paying you 20000 at the end of the month. When the month, eh, give him his 20000 Don't add it to your own. Otherwise, you are inviting the wrath of God. May we not use our hand to incur the wrath of God upon ourselves in Jesus' name. So my advice this month to every one of us is avoid sin. It kills. What you know is not good is sin. Sin is a transgression of the law. You do what is wrong. That is sin. Sin. What is sin? Sin means wrongdoing and transgression. Somebody has worked for you. You know you don't want to pay. That's why we say, the work is not good though. You're not good though. Then you'll be looking for one way to slice the money. Slice it and slice it. That's transgression. Praise the name of the Lord. Why not call the person? Do it right. Sin is a reproach to any people. Proverbs 14.34 is It will bring reproach. He brought reproach to Rachel. He brought reproach to uh, Gehazi. He brought reproach to uh, uh, David. And he brought reproach to Abraham. Although God will deliver you about it, we suffer for it. By mercy, like he did to David. He had mercy on David. David has long died. Many, many thousands of years ago. But Israel is still fighting war. Calamity upon calamity. I saw them about two weeks ago. These people, they are not tired of fighting war. Then I remember that a curse has been placed. Sword will never depart from your house. May that not be your portion. So, the payment for sin is death and suffering. You love, you love oppressing people. Okay now. Don't try it all. Repent from today. Say, Father, have mercy on me. If you are free from all this, you say, Lord, give me grace not to go into them. Your friends are doing it. Tell them to stop. Because it will bring wahala. Amen. So I want to thank God for your life that you not use your heart to bring reproach upon yourself and your children yet unborn. It at each time I read about Gehazi, it pains me because people suffering that thing today, they don't even know Gehazi, but they are all suffering it. So this morning we are going to pray. Oh Lord, first prayer we say, Father, may I, Naomi, put your name, not use my hand to do what will bring reproach upon my family, my children. My generation yet unborn. Open your mouth and begin to pray that prayer wherever you are watching me from. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will not use my hand to do things that will bring calamity upon me. Do things that will bring calamity upon my children, upon my generation yet unborn. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the mercy of God to help me. I pray for the grace of God to help me to run away from sin so that I will not be destroyed by the destroyer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we are going to take another prayer and say, Oh Lord, every sin in my lineage, every sin in my lineage coming from where I don't know, we don't have effect over me. I use the blood of Jesus to separate me, separate my children, separate my children yet unborn from every sin coming from my father's side, from my father, mother's side, that would have been a reproach unto me. Father, I separate myself. Oh, yeah, pour the blood, pour the blood. The blood of Jesus became better things than the blood of Abel. I command the blood of Jesus, say it, to speak deliverance upon me, upon my children, upon my generation yet unborn. Every sin from my father's side, every sin from my mother's side, every sin unknown to me will not have effect upon my life. Open your mouth and begin to pray. I pray now in the name of Jesus Christ, every sin that was committed by my father, my, my mother, by my forefather, by my mother, father, they will not have effect upon me and my children. They will not have effect upon me and my generation. In the name of Jesus, I pray the blood of Jesus upon myself upon my children, upon my generation, that that blood will separate me. I command that blood that speak better things than the blood of Abel, to speak deliverance, to speak separation between me and those sins, in the name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to pray this final prayer. I say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you because I belong to you. In the book of 1 John 3, verse 8, the Bible says, for this sake, the Son of Man was made manifest, that he may destroy every power of the devil. Say, my father, my father, every power of the devil that has been reigning in my life 
unknown to me, the source unknown to me, in the day, in the night, in any form that power is raining, in the name of Jesus, I destroy it. Oh, yeah, begin to destroy, begin to destroy, begin to destroy every works of the devil in your life, in your destiny, in your children's life, their destiny, in whatever you do in life, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray today, oh God, that the blood of Jesus, that the name of Jesus will destroy that work, that foundation, I break you. That foundation, I break you. I command the power in the name of Jesus to penetrate that foundation. I break every, every, every everything that is ugly in my foundation. Every work of the enemy around my life that would have promoted calamity and evil. I command you be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father, because you came to save and deliver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pray for you right now, child of God. Every sin that was committed by your parents that would have brought calamity and reproach upon you because you have accepted Jesus into your life, because Jesus is your father, I command that power to be destroyed from their root in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Whatever is reigning in your family, that's as a result of pattern. Every wrong pattern that has been set, that is speaking from one generation to the other. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because the authority has been given to me. To decree a thing and the law we establish. May the mercy of God speak for you this month. May the mercy of God speak for your children this month. May the mercy of God deliver you from that bondage. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I speak deliverance into your life. Through the blood of Jesus. And through the authority that Jesus gave to me. To deliver. To save and to liberate. I prophesy into your life and destiny. From today you are delivered. From that delay you are delivered. From that shame you are delivered. From that sickness that you don't know is truth you are delivered. From that power that comes to disturb your, your, your life you are delivered. In the name of the Lord Jesus. May Jesus stand between you and every obstacle. May his power crush the work of the enemy. May you be free in the day. May you be free in the night. Your, the labor of your hands are blessed. Your footsteps are ordered by the Lord. You will not stumble. You will not fall. Every pit that the enemies have dug for you, you will not fall into it in the name of Jesus. Anywhere you are summoned for destruction, may the God of heaven speak on your behalf. May the angels of God be sent to deliver you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you stand victorious, you stand tall. And from today, you receive power not to harbor sin in your bosom. It is well with you, child of God. You are blessed, you are blessed, you are promoted, you are delivered, you are set free. And throughout this month and the remaining days of the year, it shall be well with you. I hand you over to the Most High God to take care of you. By October, we shall come together to shout hallelujah. It is well with you. In Jesus' name, you remain a blessing. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Have you given your life to Jesus? Jesus is coming again. How many of you have given your life to Jesus since you started watching this, uh, my cast? Please, I want a feedback from you. How is your faith? I want to feedback. Has this been a blessing to you? I want a feedback. And uh, there is a time I'm going to set aside where I just ask you questions and you just talk back to me. I pray that this message you have heard today will bless you, keep you, make you wiser unto salvation for your own good. In Jesus' name, you are blessed. Amen. Bye-bye.